Hello and good morning. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Ian and normally I have my training partner Lauren who would be sitting in a chair or at least standing on the other side. But today she's a little bit busy. She hopes to drop in and say hello and maybe toss some kettlebells around as well. So thank you again for joining. As I have my chair here, we have our bodyweight practice. I have a mat off to the side by the end where you might just want something more comfortable or soft on the knees. To start today's practice, we'll start with some hip rotations, some ankles, working on the movements like our hinges for the windmill and our presses or push-ups for strength. First, let's start with our breath. And for that, I'll, stay seat. I'll, I'll get seated. So establish a comfortable position for yourself, sitting tall, making sure that there's room to fill the belly. Keeping your spine extended, hands could go on the belly and with closed lips, breathe in and out of the nose. What do you feel? Is that easy? What's that challenge like today? Repeat, breathing in through the nose and exhale. Inhale through the nose and exhale. Repeat, breathing in through the nose and exhale. And repeat, in through the nose and exhale. Before we do too much more breathing, we have been breathing since day one. I know. We've been breathing like this in our practice since the onset of this COVID period. We get asked a lot in our practice in the backyard and online why we emphasize breathing in and out of the nose. Breathing in and out of the nose helps prevent dust, things getting in our body. Breathing in the nose is an efficient way, a challenging way, but an efficient way to breathe. Did you know that you only absorb oxygen on an exhale? <laughs> Hold on to that exhale. Let's try that one more time. Hold the exhale for four seconds. Take a sniff in and hold the exhale here. Empty for four, three, two. Breath in through the nose and exhale. Holding empty for four, three, two. Repeat the inhale. And an exhale. And slow down that breath, just like Lauren tells me on the bike ride. Are you, are you breathing with your mouth closed? I'm trying. It's not easy, but continue to try through our practice here today. Let's get back up. Using your balance aid as I have our chair or your kitchen counter, extend one leg that the heel touches or near touches the toe out front. Extend the standing leg hip, Externally rotate in the hip, followed by an internal rotation in the hip. Keep the hips coming forward, avoiding twists. Repeat one more to external rotation and bring the leg back towards the side or nine o'clock, three o'clock. From here, we're extended tall. We'll roll in on that hip. Maybe check your foot and make sure it's not doing too much of the work. Repeat a roll in and a roll out and then one more roll in and pull into center. Alternate to the other side. Tall on the single leg, step out with the heel strike, extend the hips and rotate inseam forward and hide the inseam. Keep the hip extended, external rotation and internal rotation. Open up into that external rotation with our inseam facing forward and move the leg towards the side. Are we still tall? From here, we'll internally rotate on the hip, making sure the foot isn't in that sickled position. And again, then the a open or external rotation in the hip after. Repeat and in, repeat and out, one more in, and pull. I'll move my chair off to the side for a second. And now, Working in the front and side positions, I'd like to revisit the topics of our foot tripod. 
On our foot tripod, we have our heel pad. We would have a weirdly placed big toe pad here on the hand and then the pinky pad. Stepping out to front, only land on your heel pad. You probably can't go too far. Then push off. Alternate to the same, uh, same position of the foot on the other side. Heel pad. Repeat one more time. Heel pad and heel pad. Next step to the front and find the pinky pad of the foot. Pinky pad. Back. Lateral, other side. Pinky pad. Find the lateral or outside border of your foot as you step. Step on that pinky. Now excite that big toe pad and press on, push off. Press on, push off. Hopefully you feel that you're taking slightly bigger strides. Having the heel strike is very much like a walk, a heel strike, a nice small gait. When we get into those movement clocks, jumps, hops, skips, a little bit longer and think toe, ball, heel. Do the same thing out to the side though first. So standing tall, out to the side with a heel. Again, probably can't go too far and coming back is quite tough. Heel, one more time, lateral, heel, and heel. To the side on the lateral border of the foot, find the lateral border, together, lateral border, together. One more time, lateral, or pinky side, and pinky side. Last, find that big toe, push off the big toe, and one more again, pushing away. We'll come back to the clock in just a second. Let's revisit that chair now and working on our cat cow. We'll get to the floor in a second. Our cues to the floor will be hinges and folds and we'll screw those hands in to our chair or box or your apparatus of choice. Keeping the shoulders low and the head neutral, ask your, your abs on the front to flex the lumbar spine. Try to avoid moving through the rib cage at this point and from there, tilt the tailbone towards the ceiling. Pack your shoulders low, create tension on the abdominals and flex or round the lumbar low back into extension. That is a mostly neutral shape. That's not, and then that's not. But find that middle ground, lock in those abs, and same thing, normalize that head or standardize the head position. And through the rib cage, can you pull to the abs and then extension of that T-spine. Repeat, flexion or pulling through the rib cage, connecting ribs to hips, and then keeping the abs on the front turned on, try to extend or push your sternum forward. I feel my head and neck getting a little bit excited here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an extra chin tuck just to emphasize that it's my back moving or trying to get my back ribs to moving here and not exclusively my head and neck. From here, place hands on knees and extend hips through. Let's step back to that movement clock and gently try to lengthen out your stride and now take a right leg step from front to the diagonal to the lateral, alternate the side and we'll do it twice. Toe ball heel, hips facing forward, pushing off. Toe ball heel, hips facing forward, pushing off. Toe ball heel, hips facing forward, push off, alternate side. Stiff leg on the center position here and push. Diagonal position and press. Laterally, toe ball heel and push. And one more time, alternate leg to the front. Keep that back leg straight, push off. Back leg stiff, push off. Lateral facing foot, forward facing hips. And last time, other side. Toe ball heel, push through the foot, stiffen the leg on the other side, toe ball heel on the landing, push, and last one to the side. Our spine is magnificent. It's supposed to and capable of doing things like bending, twisting, turning, and bracing with rigidity. 
We'll play with our spine here in three different ways and then ultimately going forward in our extensions, extension phase of the spine with the windmills and our push-ups. Standing tall with either your back against the wall or with your bum gently nestled against that counter or chair. At the top, flex the C-spine, pulling the chin to the sternum. Flex through the rib cage, pulling the ribs onto the hips. And we're avoiding pushing your bum back. So let's start over again from the top. Without displacing those hips, we'll start with gentle extension at the head and neck and pull down. Flex through the spine as we pull the rib cage onto the hips with bum squeezes. Knees can soften, but try to keep those hips over top as we go slow to flexion. From here, back up tall and relax. I'll step against the wall here. Hopefully I don't go off the screen. I do go off the screen, so I'm not gonna do that. But again, off the wall, it would be the same thing where the wall could be touching our head. We'll flex through the spine. The wall would still be touching, 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 touching. Keep that lumbar vertebrae on the ground or on the floor, the wall rather, and then stack up slowly to tall. Repeat one more time. Start with the head, neck, and light extension. Tuck the chin with the crown and the top knot tall. Flex through the C-spine. Pull through the ribs. Squeeze the bum. Pulling into a flexion shape. And stacking back up tall. Flexion rounding, super important for the spine, as is our extension shape. I'm going to widen my stance just a little bit. From here, we'll cue up our first hinge of the day, and we'll chop on those hips, pushing the butt back, and we have a long spine, a neutral head, and shoulders that are right over tops of those knees. From here, extend through, emulate that planks tension with core tension, core brace, glute squeeze. Repeat two more. Chop the hinge, maintain the spine in extension or a long line from tailbone to your head, and we'll extend the hips forward. Repeat one more repetition. Push out on the floor to create tension as you go back and drive those hips into extension. Relax. From here, we'll get to the floor. We'll use that hinge one more time and then a slow push up to the ground and get ups on the up. Clear that space. Let's set up our hip hinge, where again, if we have the hands on the kneecaps, our forearms and the shin bones are parallel with each other and perpendicular with the floor. From this position, cheat or tip just a little bit forward and walk yourself to the hand position of your push-up. If you're gonna do a push-up, where would you put your hands? Look at them, look at them, look at them. Now extend the hips to a tall Neo like me and show me, where did you have your hands? There is no right answer, but there are some wrong answers. Really quick, this is really tough. This is really tough. So somewhere in the middle, based on lever length, etc. Next, if you were at the bottom of your push-up, could you show me the hand position and then the elbow position that you might find yourself in? Three, two, one. Does it look something like mine? Again, there's tremendous variation allowed here. Typically, somewhere within this range would be great. If your shape was like this, we need to bring those shoulder blades down and promote that stability at the scapula first, and then we can think about our press up. So, in a modified position, hold your planks position again. Pull yourself to the floor, emulating those 45 degree elbow bends at the shoulder. Flip to your back, <sighs> take a breath. Let's take an imaginary bell, put it in our fist, but then cross it on our heart or chest. Extend through the hip, pushing off, pulling on the ground to our elbow. Tall sit with a squish of that bug. We have our retracted shoulder. We'll bridge, we'll sweep, 
We'll hang out here for a second. The spine is also capable of that rotation. So from here, very slow, moving the rib cage or spine, not the head, try to get the other shoulder towards touching the elbow on the ground. Push away from the floor, keeping the shoulder blade retracted as you push our heart to the wall out front. Repeat two more. Keep the shoulder blade packed as we slowly rotate here. Again, this would be my head and neck overworking, so I'm gonna to continue to look at my hand or my thumb and try to twist my rib cage around. From there, I'll take my time, I'll open back up and think how we can apply this to our windmill later in the practice. Last repetition, our armpit pulls low. We go across the body. I'm feeling more free my third time through and I hope that's a shared feeling for you. And then we'll open up with our heart facing away, sweep that back leg to the tall sit, find the elbow and press off in our core brace. We'll switch sides and the same thing. Hand across chest, pretend with that kettlebell and bring it in. Extend through the hip, cramp in the glutes, bracing core, up, pulling onto the elbow. Push to our tall sit, and the tall sit, weight transfer of hand, and sweep. Now my chest is facing down, and our get up, we want it facing that wall. Hand across chest, slowly rotate across the body here, Watch that we're not overworking the head. And then with our heart forward, hold the stretch. Repeat a slow rotation to the stiff elbow, linking ourselves to the ground. Keep the armpit down and rotate, pushing your heart forward. Third and final repetition. Rotate around. Easy on that head and neck, Ian. It's easy to get that carried away because it feels like you do more work and then push your heart forward, feel that stretch. Let's go from there to our sweep, from our sweep to our elbow, and our elbow to the ground. Whew. And here we are. Oh, and there she is, walking around like an elephant. Hello, welcome to our practice. Hello, sorry. We still have one microphone, but we're both here now. Something feels a little bit more usual and and ready to rock about that. What were you doing? We were just doing some get-ups, prepped our get-up, prepped some rotation, and we're just gonna do one more core prep drill here, and then we'll get back up to the bar, the hip bars, Whew, hip bars, hip bars. So on our backside here, as Lauren's showing, we'll just rem uh, replicate that first movement of the get-up with our hip extension. So our glutes are gonna be cramped, and we're gonna extend the hips slowly from the bottom to the top, away from the floor keeping the chin tuck and moving your hair or ponytail out the back if you need to, keep those hips extended and for 10 seconds starting now, squeeze your butt, pull the knees together, push the feet in the floor, core brace for three, two, and then with control, articulate, undulate, roll down the spine with control. Lauren's cue again is to have the belly button on the way down, to have the belly button touch before the butt. Let's do that one last time, or maybe twice if you can't quite get it. Cramp glutes, extend those hips to the top, bottom to top articulation. Now that we're at the top, we're gonna whew, hold that for 10 seconds, pull your knees together, cramp up the glutes, brace the core and hold for three, two, keep tension and slowly return aiming to get that belly button to touch before the bum. And we'll take our time coming out of that. Now use that power and that hip extension in this first movement as we get to standing one last time. Point to the ceiling. The arm that's pointed would have the knee bent as well like a hip bridge, but take the hand across the chest. Pushing through the hip with your hip extension power, pull the tall sit, at the tall sit, keep your chest facing the wall that you are and open up in your sweep. Now push away from the floor, square up your lunge, stand to tall. Grab the chair, the kitchen counter, whatever it is, and we'll get going on some movements here. 
the hip bar. We warmed up with those articulations in the hip, and now we're gonna go right into our circle. We'll hopefully do it twice per side again, low and then high. Move to my left, got it. So from here, we're tall on this inside leg, and we'll tendu or point to forward. From there, we're gonna open that up to our second position or to the side. And from the side, we'll internally rotate on the hip as we reach around to the back. Flex over the toes and pull underneath the hip. Repeat, hip extension to the back with a straight leg. Open up in that rotation, reaching to the side, rolling to in front, pulling underneath and always growing tall. To the front one last time. This time off the floor is allowed. Maintain the height. Maintain the height as you reach around, stiffening the legs, extending the hips, reaching to the back, flexing over the toes, and underneath. And final time, here, open up, toe point. I like going from the back to the front. I find it easier. What about you? Tap and down. Cool? All right. Same thing on the other side now. Tall. Point. Open. Slow and control and try to reach one millimeter bigger. Get out that compass and trace a bigger circle by one millimeter every time. And then when we're out the back, hugging center, we'll flex over toes. Keeping your knee straight, Lauren. I know I felt that. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, now here we go. Out the back, same thing. Keep it on the ground. Keep those knees straight and ribs down. Open in the hip. To the side. To the front. And down. Final repetition off the floor. To the front in our tondu. Off the floor. Reaching away and pushing forward extending through the hip, reaching and touching the back, and then flexing over the toes with a straight knee. And then to the back, millimeters off the floor, doesn't have to be much, ribs the hips, keep the knees straight and nice and control. Articulate that circle with the protractor, with the setting just one little smidge more open if we're allowed. We're not quite done with our chair yet. Did we do it off the floor Didn't we? That was the second yeah, one. Sure. That was the second one. Okay. Yep. So from here, we still use our bar, uh, the, bat, the bar or the chair here. We'll get the ankle to the coup de pied position here. And from a low position, stay tall on the inside leg, open up, and pull into center. This is the hardest thing to do, truly. It's easy to feel that as tension work on the glute. When you close, can you pull against this tension here, close up and take the daylight out of the center? Twice more. Stay tall on the inside leg and we'll extend those hips forward and pull against imaginary and real tension now as you pull in. If that hand helps, let's try that one last time here. We'll open up, excuse me, with no resistance. Gently place a hand, now pull into the hand, and then gently pull, closing the range of motion with tension. Place that leg to the ground, alternate on the other side. Okay, yep. Use your balance aid, here we go. So again, coup de pied position in the front, tall, extended hip on the balance leg, will open up to the side. And from here, pull in, to center, taking away that light. Open up, create that triangle on the inside, create tension on the pull, and return to center. Two more repetitions as we open up to the side, extending the hips forward, pulling, closed, and final repetition, open up, pull to center, and close. We'll be doing that one more time. I will be doing that exercise at, sorry, at retire or at the knee position here. 
looking for that number four or letter P. What height, you, what height do your hips feel you're going to do? It? The letter P. The letter P. Uh, same. Same. So follow us to the, to the knee is allowed, but we need to make sure that the hips stay level and that the low back isn't doing too much work. Use your balance aid. That's what it's for. Inside leg tall. Coup de pied, great. If we have that, own that. Let's bring that up towards the knee. Keep the hip extended on the standing leg and open to the side. If that hand helped, pull against tension to close. Three more repetitions. Tension and control as you open, keeping the hips forward facing and pull closed. Two more, cramp up the standing leg, extend that standing leg hip as you open up to the side and close. And balance aids as needed. Last repetition here to the side, open and close. Extend the hip, foot underneath. Alternate to the other side. Tall on the inside leg. These cues don't change, but I tell myself every time, tall squeeze. Coup de pied, great. If that's accessible, let's move towards the knee. Hips are level. We'll open up to the side, extending the hips forward. And from there, pull against that tension, returning the leg to center. Create daylight. Look for that beautiful triangle between the foot, the knee, and the groin. And then take away that daylight by hugging in tight to the body. Two more repetitions. Whose hips are politely burning? My hips feel great. I hope that's a shared thing. And we'll close to center. Final repetition. Open to the side with the hips forward. Close. Pulling in. Extending the hip and the knee to down. And relax. The windmill. I'd just like to show you one quick repetition of the windmill. We could windmill like that. We could windmill pitch like this if we're in baseball. Watch out or bowling, yeah. but the position that we are most interested in with our windmill could look ultimately something like this. Using that hinge, keeping the heart facing forward to tall. Then the feet would square, and we could alternate that on the other side. Just watch for now, we have a racks position. We'll go load overhead. Offset those feet, hinge on the hip, pushing back, holding for time, and extending through. Pull down. How was your classic hinge or two-footed hinge from that warm-up? Are you familiar with this? If great, let's move on as we explore that windmill. As an, alter as an alternate exercise for these hinges, if your hands are on your knees, your forearms are vertical, your spine is extended, and come up to tall. Revisit those basics for your hinge and progress with us here into the windmill. From the windmill, we won't use our hands or, or loads overhead quite yet. With your feet facing forward, laterally face one foot, that's my left, and then I will go on about a 45 degree angle based on my hips to that corner over here. Now I'm gonna soften the leg that faces lateral, stiffen the knee, this one, and then chop on the hip. Our heart is gonna face the wall in front of us the whole time as we push our hip back there. From there, we'll extend the hips, bracing, squeezing at the top. Repeat two more. For me, I'm gonna chop. I feel an incredible load stretch right here. And I love it. I like that feeling. So I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to extend my hip through. How does that feel for you? The load stretch, the strain. If it feels good and safe, let's go one more time. Chopping the hip. The knee on the lateral is soft or bent. The other leg, as you can see on Lauren, is super straight. Heart's facing forward. Stand tall. Pivot center. Alternate those feet. We have... I told them they'd throw a kettlebell. I knew you'd do that. I threw it to the wrong side. So from here, we have a soft knee and a stiff leg on the left or out to the side back. From here, we'll continue the hinge on the hip, 
pushing back that way, keeping our heart facing forward. And from there, we will return to tall. Chop that hip, soften a leg, stiffen the other and hinge back, holding for a one 1,000 and back up. Final repetition, we'll chop, we're hinging and back up to tall, reset. Let's use our lunge as we transfer to the ground to perform push-ups. 10 seconds or similar in this lunge. Drop lunge, step back. First check in on hips and spacing. Now take about 10, nine, eight, seven, nice and controlled time here. Feel nice tension, nice work, oh, yeah. and always soft landings. We talked about those hand positions in the warm-up for push-ups. There are a lot to choose from, but generally those elbows need to be below 90 degrees, closer to 45, maybe even like 15 at the side. From this position, push-up. From a modified position as I am, or a high planks push-ups position like Lauren, what are you going to do in your push-up? What do you feel about your push-up? Hold this for five more seconds. What's up with your push-up? And just relax off those hands. Do you have a favorite, least favorite push-up drill? Today, I think it's going to be your least favorite, but let's work on portions or those partial push-ups. Starting at the top again, hold your position, and if you found it easy from the knees, go from the toes. Kind of easy on those toes, Maybe try one hand. Let's kick, stick to the basics. Here we go. 10 seconds of the top position of the push up. Are your bums squeezed? Are you pushing the floor away? Is your chin in line with the rest of the body? Three, two, knees down for a couple seconds. Find mid station. Maybe use that on your knees or from your toes. In three seconds, let's find ourselves to our mid station. And at this point, moment, where are your elbows? Are your shoulder blades tight? Are your elbows into the body and press away. Whew, hang out there for a second. I'd like to repeat that one last time, getting to your safe low, and then we'll flip over to our backside. Take a breath in, brace your core, pull yourself to your safe low position on your push up and hold for three, two, and then ease off the tension and roll to your backside. On your backside, point to the ceiling. If you think your shoulders are good to go overhead, keep pointing up like me. And if not, take your hand across your chest. From here, we'll keep pointing up at the ceiling, pushing through the hip. Are you still pointing up? Push to the hand. Are you still pointing up? Transition through that windmill. Are you pointing up? The lunge, the overhead, and a stand up and pull down, chucking it. We'll do that again in a second. Let's get that windmill going again for our second repetition set here. Any question about the windmill? Let us know in that uh, comment section or shoot us a note. Typically in the windmill, the load and the stretch, this lateral hip right here. Let's get your setup with your forward facing feet Pivot to lateral and then to that diagonal for my hips. Soften the lateral facing foot and stiffen the center leg. Chop on that hip. Heart faces the computer screen here or the wall in front of you as you're pushing your bum back and driving to tall. Did you use that bum cheek? Let's do it twice more. Soften the butt cheek to hinge on the hip and we'll push the hip back over to the corner. Then cramp up that tension, extend through the hip, drive through. Last repetition, hinge on the hip, pushing to the back, heart facing forward, squeeze the glute, extending the hips and then returning the feet to parallel or center. Laterally facing foot, quarter turn on the other, stiff leg, soft knee, chop. Encourage that hip to go back to the corner and drive 
to tall. Two more repetitions with the chop, pushing the hip on that diagonal, growing tall with the cramp. Final repetition, soft knee and vertical shins, stiff leg in the back, heart facing the computer screen, and up and center. Relax. Let's use the lunge on the alternate leg if you can remember, and again, our three position push up. Step to the back, get that spacing just right, and then over 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Nice and slow. Excellent. And then underneath. From here, push ups again. Start the high, work our way to mid station, and challenge your low. High planks position, 10 seconds, tension, go. Packing shoulders, squeezing glutes, bracing core, maintaining that breath for three, two, soft knees. Take a second, maintain the extension through the spine. Second position, mid station, modified or high plank push ups position. Get to mid station, tucking the hips and the chin and holding for four, four, three, two, gently knees. Could you press up? Whew. Final repetition, the safest, lowest place of your push up, and then return to your back for our get up up. Planking positions from the toes, modified positions as I will be here. Pull yourself low into your plank hover or push up hover, holding for five, four, three, down with control, flip to your back. Take the other hand, if you can remember, and point to the ceiling. Pointing at the ceiling, extend through the hip, extend through the hip to pull, and pull to tall sit. Check the hand, are you still pointing at the ceiling? And is your armpit down? From here, extend the hip, and then sweep through. Back up to tall, square, and stand. Pull that arm back down to the rack. We do one more repetition, coming back to those single leg basics of the hinge as well. Working on a single leg, we alternate one little push pull push drill for the overhead, and then we'll get into hips to finish. For um, the, the single leg hinge, I'm sorry, yes, sorry, single leg hinges, typically I would have my little exercise pins, something to hold on to. Standing on two feet, hinge on those hips, getting towards said position. Shoulders stacked over top of those knees and ankle bones. Transfer weight to one leg and slide a single leg out the back. Using the leg out the front, cramp up the glute and extend the hip. Pause. Keep the quads parallel at the front while keeping the hips or butt pushing through. Same leg, open your stance as a maybe, switch weight back, transfer on that single leg, Same hinge leg. to the back. Same leg. Hold for a second, cramp up the standing leg extending through and for one last repetition on that leg trace the floor with the toes maintain the shins vertical in the front hold for a second use that heel drive full foot tripod on the balanced foot extend and underneath same thing on the other leg open my stance and set up my hinge to start from there I'll transfer my weight into my single foot, slide to the back, making sure my shoulders and hips stay square. Drive into the ground, extending the hip, and keep quads flat at the front while keeping to push the bum forward. Same leg, slowly hinge on that single foot as allowed. Are your shins vertical? Are those hips level and squared shoulders? Extend through the hip, on that standing leg. Final repetition. We'll hinge, oops, balance, 
Hold for a second. Grow tension and control to tall. Reset those feet and relax the shoulders. Returning the rolling pins to the kitchen or the clubs to the wall. From here, let's get that mat that I talked about earlier in the warm up, something soft for your knees, and we'll get into our last hip drill yeah. for the day. This was a little request by Lauren, yeah. and we like hearing about your requests too. Do you like the sweating part of the workouts? Do you like the breathing parts? Let us know. We have something for everyone, whether it's little lifters handstands, or restoring and recharging. Swing. Something for everyone, swing in two. Lunge position, be patient. I'll back up a little bit, sorry. Have a little bit of room, there we go. Okay, we're in that tall lunge position through here, and we'll take a single leg out front. All right. Spacing, gotta work on our spacing here, okay, I think it's better. You can see knees now. More important to see Lauren's knees, and then uh, the hip that's underneath her hand there, her right hip as well. So we're in the center. Are the hips facing forward in addition to those shoulders? From that position, the foot stays heavy and gently ask that knee to go over the toe. So in our hinge practice, we don't want knees over toes ever. I don't think. Not in a hinge. Not in a hinge. But in a squat and in stairs and in running, this drill is very important. So take a look at Lauren for a second. Don't emulate it because it's kind of crazy that her knee is here while her foot is still heavy. Take a second and just switch to the other side. Does she have the same mobility on either side here? Is one way different? In Lauren's case, it's mostly the same, which is great. Allows her to get low in her squats and fast on the runs efficient and fast on the runs, okay? Come back to that original side. Making it a little bit more work now. From this position, press that knee towards over toe. Does that feel okay? Squeeze the back leg bum cheek and push through the floor, returning to a tall position only. So you're pushing the bent knee forward maybe feeling this is a load stretch on the front of this hip. Relax tension. Adjust as you need. Two more repetitions on that same side. The knee towards over the toe with hips level facing forward. Heel heavy, squeeze your back butt cheek and push through the front leg, meeting in the middle, making it work for the leg in the front and load stretch on the back. Relax the tension. Repeat for one more, pushing the knee towards forward, cramping the back butt cheek, and pushing through the floor to get tall and will hold for five, four, and keep pushing this hip back, the back hip forward, and this one in, and relax. Take that front leg, put it underneath, switch to the other side. The other leg out front, you have the hips level, forward facing hips as usual. Knee towards over toe, and this is where I know I need to keep this hip bringing around. Now from this position, we'll press forward with this bent knee in the right, keep the butt cheek squeeze on the back, and breathe, and stretch and load that back hip for four, three, two, stay, but just chill. Stay square, push that knee towards over the toe, keeping the heel heavy as Lauren's demonstrating here. Now press forward with the front leg, push that back leg through, meet in the middle with a nice stretch and hold for four, three, two, relax. Pause Lauren, I would recommend that Lauren's knee tries to get there, but push your bum through. Push your bum through, there we go. Okay, so find the right space. And again, really encourage that knee in the front to stay vertical once you're in your lunge position. Final one here. Knee towards over toe, push and squeeze that back leg butt cheek tight, push the front leg forward, aiming to get nine degrees at the knee and keeping that hip nice, that hip in the back squeezing forward and relax tension. Final move, open up those knees, gently get on those forearms here 
in this finish in our frog. Maybe on elbows, maybe on hands. Was it easy to get into like me? Or was it a little bit more sticky like Lauren today? From here, we have packed shoulders, long spines, Lean forward for reprieve on those hips. Reprieve? That, doesn't, that gives me more. If you tuck under the hip, 